Good morning, rock stars, and welcome to Bandcamp. Woohoo! Um, it's hard to believe, but this is actually our first Bandcamp of 2023 because our last band camp was on December 28th. So this is very, very, very exciting to get to be here together. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to hit print on something. Hang on. We're going to hit print because I need a copy of our Quilting Rockstar set list, which if you've already printed yours, go ahead and grab it, excuse me, and have it handy. Okay. All right. Let me see who's here. Jeannie is here. Yvonne is here. Selwyn is here. And there are 36, oh, and a whole lot more others of y'all here as well. So if you are here with me live or on the replay, jump in the chats, jump in the comments, say hello, give a hoot and a holler. I would love to be able to greet you. Come on, have you come in? Havana is here. Yeah, we can't see you. There you go. There you go. All right. Y'all say hi. I'm going to grab my set list and then we're going to jump right in. Okay. This is so exciting. Got up early on Saturday morning just to get to hang out with y'all. It's a pretty fabulous thing to get to do. And we get to talk about one of my very favorite things in the whole wide world, which is stash busting. Now, that might not be a very popular opinion, right? To be like, stash busting is one of my favorite topics. Well, let me tell you, we've been doing stash busting over here at String and Story for a really long time. Um, some of those original names that I hollered out, maybe remember some of our last um, stash busting events. We did summer stash busting, let's see, 2018, 2019, 2020. And then we took a hiatus for two years, right? Life has just been busy. Things have been crazy. Um, and to be perfectly honest, we moved two years ago. And when we moved um, two years ago, I downsized my own stash pretty heavily. Um, I did a lot of de-stashing, got rid of a lot of fabric. Um, I downsized my stash again last year. Uh, so to be perfectly honest, I felt a little bit like it wasn't something that I could authentically speak to over the last couple of years because I'm like, I gave a lot of my fabric away. Honestly, I, you know, because I was like, I just don't know about my storage situation. Now having the shop, we've got all this fabric. And then about, gosh, two months ago now, I was having several separate conversations with different people, right? There was a conversation going on about like, hey, Holly Ann, you really should revamp your patterns. Um, there was another conversation going on about like, you know, we've got a lot of projects half done uh, starting to pile up in the back room of the shop. And then, you know, I was cleaning out one day and was like, you know what? Uh, I may not still have a very large fabric stash, but I have reached a point of what I'm referring to as stagnation, right? If you've been following along with the summer stash busting blogs, you've started to hear me talk about this uh, and a lack of flow. Projects were not reaching completion. Uh, things were getting started and then they were just sitting. And I realized, ah, it's time for summer stash busting to come back. It's time for us to revisit this conversation. Um, and I've got a little bit of a different perspective than maybe I have had in years past, okay? So this is so very exciting. I also see uh, that Helen is here, Jan is here, Renee is here. Nicole, you deserve a trophy and an extra large cup of coffee. She is up at seven to be tuning in. This is Commitment Rockstar. Wowie zowie, thank you. Michelle, Christy, Mitzi, Jan, Joanne, Sue, it is so wonderful to see all of y'all here. So. Should we don't jump in? We have just shy of two hours together before the shop opens. So I have a pretty firm deadline. Can't talk forever on this. Got the coffee. Excellent. Cheers to that. This is already my second cup and y'all are going to see me sipping as we go along. Um, I was like excited slash nervous last night. So I did not sleep well. I was really worried about oversleeping. <laughs> So Yvonne is also up at seven. I love it. Thank you, early risers. Um, so here's the thing. We've got a pretty hard stop. I have a lot of ground to cover with y'all. Um, if you have already been following along with summer stash busting so far this year, you're going to recognize a lot of what we're going to talk about today, right? A lot of it is topics that I've already been visiting in the blogs that have been happening, okay? And if you read um, this week's newsletter, then I gave you a little bit of an outline of what, what's kind of happening with our summer stash busting, right? Up until now, next week's blog is kind of the last one in this first block um, that I'm calling preparation, right? This is all about the setup. How do we kind of arrive at a sense of order and focus out of what might be a sense of chaos 
or stagnation in our sewing rooms, right? And from this point, we're going to move through more practical tips and tricks um, as far as actually getting projects done, right? So we're going to have some blogs about binding. We're going to have some blogs about basting, uh, blogs about quilting to actually get these things to the finish line, okay? But think of today, if you've read every blog that I've written so far this year, um, think of today as an opportunity to ask questions of me live. Think of today as an opportunity uh, to connect with your fellow rock stars who are also on this journey of working on some stash projects this summer. Um, and think of this as an opportunity to ask kind of more specific questions, right? If you're like, this is the situation I'm in, do you have any tips or tricks, right? All right. So without further ado, I could just talk at the camera all day long. So I'm so excited, but I made slides. So let's embrace them. Uh, welcome to Quilting Rockstar Bandcamp, How to Bust Your Stash. All right. Um, here's a picture of my lovely stash before the move two years ago. And I have to admit, I got a little nostalgic looking at this picture because I was like, oh, those are really fun fabrics. And some of them I've used and some of them have gone on to other homes. Uh, so let's talk about you know, what, what's going on. All right. So a few quick announcements. First of all, uh, we will be live today, for, like I said, for about the next two hours, the replay will be right here. This same link that you're using to watch now. Um, if I, uh, talk the way I expect to talk over the next two hours, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit like drinking out of a fire hose, right? I have been really brewing deeply and heavily on a lot of these topics. I have a lot of thoughts to share. Um, so if you want to revisit any of this, or if you want to put it into practice and go back through this content, you will come right back here on YouTube in order to be able to do that. Okay. Um, and then finally, if you're tuning in and you don't have the worksheet, please go register for free at stringastory.com forward slash summer dash 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 busting dash 2023. I'm going to put a link in the chat because that's a lot easier, right? Um, oh, especially because that's not the correct link to get the free worksheet. <laughs> Use the link that's in the chat to go get this worksheet. Um, everything we talk about today is going to build up to filling this out, okay? And then this is going to be our focus for the rest of the summer. Summer Stash Busting this year goes through our celebratory virtual quilt show on August 3rd. So after today, we have about eight more weeks. This is going to be our guide for those eight weeks, okay? Uh, let me make sure that my husband is not trying to touch base. Okay. I had to make sure my kids were okay. We've got lots of moving pieces going on over here. All right, so use that link in the caption of this video, um, or if you head over to the blog, it is the Summer Stash Busting 2023 blog kind of overview that I will deliver this directly to your inbox, okay? Um, if you don't have other note paper, just take notes on the back for the rest of this, okay? If you're new here, and I suspect that some of y'all are, let me back way up eight minutes in and introduce myself. My name is Holly Ann Knight. I am founder, CEO, and lead educator at String and Story and String and Story on Maine. And it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. I live in Duluth, Georgia with my cutie hubster. He's down in that bottom photo. Um, and our two boys who are no longer that tiny, Jim and Ian, as well as our two cats, Felicia and Moby, and our dog, Havana, who you already met. All right. Um, if I am not here in String and Story on Maine, which is my quilt shop, then I'm probably out on the town green or on my Peloton or curled up somewhere with a book. There's a relatively limited number of places <laughs> that I might be hanging out. Uh, but today I am excited to be here talking to you about your stash. Claudia, what a lovely comment. You are so very welcome for the handouts. I, um, I don't talk about this super often, but I actually went to school to be a middle school English teacher. So I am a big believer in a useful handout. This is a really important teaching tool in my mind. So I love that you love it. So what is Summer Stash Busting. Summer Stash Busting is a free online annual educational event. Let me tell you, I had to pull out my English training to know where to put the commas in that sentence. Uh, designed to help you feel re-inspired by your stash. This year's event features 12 plus blogs, this band camp, and at the end of the summer, we're going to have our very first virtual quilt show, which I'm over the moon excited about. I have only a limited idea of how exactly we're gonna make that happen, but we're going to figure it out together and it's going to be epic. Um, 
just as a spoiler alert, at the end of our time together, I'm also going to share with you about the Quilting Rockstar Backstage Pass. So you'll notice because Quilting Rockstar is our community uh, collective noun around here, right? Uh, the, I'm riffing on that theme pretty heavily. So here we are at band camp. Um, we're making our set list and we also have the opportunity of a backstage pass. So this is going to include all the free benefits of summer stash busting plus a few extras. So I'm just going to make sure that y'all know about that at the end of our time together. If you enjoy this, you're going to love that. Just spoiler alert. All right. So get out that worksheet, get some note paper, and let's dive in to an enormous amount of material about our stashes. Now, Hmm. Before I do that, I actually want to ask y'all a question. Let me see what my next slide is. Oh, that, we can sit here. Um, in the chat, would you tell me, Ooh, how do I want to ask this question? What made the idea of summer stash busting appealing to you? Right. Like how, how did, how did this appeal to you? Did you wake up one day and go, I have a lot of projects that I really need some help crossing the finish line on. Or did you wake up one day and go, you know, my Sojo is just nowhere to be found. And maybe this will help me get it back. Um, did you wake up one day and go, I haven't really used any of my, um, fabric that I have. And I, I just need some help with that. Right. I would love to get a feel for just kind of where y'all are. Um, all of those are correct answers. I'm going to speak to all of those things today. Um, I just I just love to kind of know what's going on in your sewing journey. So what I love that you just caught the set list thing. <laughs> Little did we know all those years ago when somehow during that Facebook Live during a social hour that the phrase quilting rock star came to be because I don't even fully remember how it came to be, right? Little did we know that it would be just the gift that keeps on giving with the naming of all the things. <laughs> Michelle says, my sewing room is so full that I can't do anything in here. Um, Yvonne says, you just described me. Lots of fabric and no mojo to do anything with it. Christine says, my fabric are getting stale, so to speak. Christine, I love that word, stale. That's great. We're going to talk a lot about that. By the way, this is a judgment-free zone. Uh, that's going to be one of the very first things that we talk about is um, I don't want us to think of stash busting as punishment or shame right? This is about we quilt for joy units, right? Y'all hear me talk about that all the time. Um, and if something is in the way of our, our joy units, then we need to fix it, right? And that's kind of part of what we're working on. Um, Jan says, projects in too much fabric. Nicole says, I hate to throw away any fabric. So all the remnants are breeding in the dark. They really do breed in the dark. It's really unfortunate. Bailey House says, want to get my sojo back and create more charity quilts. Jeannie says, too many projects, too little time. Figure I need to live to 106 to finish everything. And I'm not that old. I mean, Jeannie, I think you living to 106 is a great idea personally. Uh, and I, I think you're doing great things to have that kind of longevity, but I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I love it. All right. Keep those coming as you feel comfortable. Like I said, judgment-free zone. Let's answer these questions. What is stash busting and why should we do it? So first up, what is stash busting? Stash busting is spending a specific period of time focusing our attention on sewing with what we already have in order to re-energize our quilting practice. All right. And I'm going to break this down multiple times, but let me go ahead and draw your attention to a couple of really important things. Um, a specific period of time. I think sometimes I hear us talk about, and I, I'm us, the collective quilting community, right? When we get on the topic of stash busting, um, we, we put really long like moratoriums on new stuff um, and it becomes unsustainable, right? Um, there's a reason why I've chosen summer and why I've limited it to 12 weeks, right? I want us to, it's a season. This is a season we enter into, okay? Um, this is about energy goes where, or uh, energy goes where, att mm -mm, where attention goes, energy flows. Finally got it out of my mouth correctly, right? So we're going to put our attention in a very specific place, put our energy there, um, and especially if this is something that is causing a block in your creativity, we just want to re jumpstart it. All right. Let's see. Uh, someone says my stash is huge and that's not stressing me as much as the scraps. So my goal is to work on getting that in order. I love that. So Cheryl says I inherited my mother's and grandmother's fabrics so three stashes to get through. 
Claudia says, what a nice little stash you have. Mine's a whole room plus a cellar full. You know, uh, on the one hand, yes, and thank you. On the other hand, also remember that I have a whole shop full of fabric. <laughs> so maybe I just disguised mine differently is what I'm starting to realize. We'll see. All right. So stash busting is not, this is really, really important. Stash busting is not a punishment. It is not a shame fest. It is not, this is so important, a command to use up all your stash. I think one of the, and I'm not going to use the word mistakes. I think that's a little harsh. One of the things I would do differently about past summer stash bustings and that I am now um, really wanting to pay attention to in this stash busting is this is not necessarily about using up stash. This is about flow, okay? Stash busting is also not required. It's not required. If you are attending today because you're looking for some inspiration, some new ideas, uh, but you don't like the label stash busting, you're very comfortable with your stash. You actually feel like you're pretty on top of your projects. You just really love the community aspect of things. One, you're so welcome here, right? This is also for you. And two, just because I'm saying that I think stash busting is a good idea doesn't mean you have to listen to me. All right, we can disagree on that and it's okay, right? There is no right size of stash. Each quilter and quilting style has different wants and needs with their stash, right? Um, I was talking about this with Marcy yesterday because I have a beautiful Bonnie Hunter quilt on the long arm and it's very, very scrappy. And so we were talking about how um, that is that requires a different kind of stash. If you're gonna do really scrappy quilting, because in order to have that kind of eye spy effect with a quilt like that, you have to have a lot of options, right? Um, versus my type of quilting, right? A lot of my quilting is very utilitarian, both in terms of quilts that are gonna get used, but also in terms of it's part of string and story, the business, right? So it is more important for me to be using the fabric that's in this room, in the shop with me, uh, than to necessarily be creating that same scrappy effect, right? So what my personal stash looks like, because technically you're correct, Claudia, it's not the same thing, right? What my personal stash looks like um, and what Stephanie's personal stash might look like, because we're creating very different quilts, different quilters need different things, right? Let's see, Yvonne says, I totally want to start using up my fabric. Jan says, I have two huge bookcases full of fabric as well as totes full of pieces and scraps. It's insane. You've got this, Jan. Um, oh my gosh, someone, I'm so, I know. This quilting plan on Chihaui is like next level. It's turning out great. I'm, that's neither here nor there. We'll get there. Okay, so here's some focuses for stash busting. So stash busting is focusing on what you already have rather than on buying more fabric and supplies. Okay. So goal number one, and I think this is a goal that we can really all get behind is I want us to create flow. Okay. When I was first starting string and story, this is like a little weirdly vulnerable, right? But one of the things you have to do as a new entrepreneur, is you have to learn a lot of things about money and how money works. So I read a lot of books about money and finances and business and finance, et cetera. Right. And one of the most important concepts I ever learned is thinking about a synonym for money is currency. And the root of the word currency is current, right? As in a river that flows, that kind of current, right? And that essentially economics in a nutshell is the money has to keep moving or bad things happen, okay? And I started thinking about that in relating, relation to stash busting because that's really true of a lot of areas of our lives, right? Um, totally opposite end of the spectrum in terms of analogies, but think about like your um, lymphatic system in your body, right? If your lymphatic system is not appropriately draining things, you're going to get really sick. It's going to be really bad, right? Flow is really, really important. Um, water that does not flow, water that sits or stagnates, grows stuff and it'll make us ill, right? So, there are definitely seasons in many areas of our lives where we experience stagnation, right? It's in quilting or in sewing, we often refer to this as like losing our mojo or losing our sojo, right? And so I want our first and foremost goal, and I think our most sustainable goal as a part of stash busting together, is to start really thinking about this idea of flow. And I think this is more important than just reduction, because part of the fun of what we do, right, is getting to buy shiny new fabrics. And it's hitting that balance of I don't want to condemn that. 
And sometimes we need to say no to ourselves, right? Sometimes we need to be grownups and have self-control and recognize that it's not in the budget or whatever. We'll get to that in number two, right? Uh, but sometimes it's just about making sure that if stuff's going to be coming in, that stuff is also going out, right? My mom used to uh, practice this, that anytime I had a birthday, if I had a party and I got 10 gifts, I had to pick 10 things that got donated or you know got cleaned out, right? We had to have flow through the house. We couldn't just continually add, continually add, continually add, right? So I want us to put our attention into the concept of flow more than anything else over the next eight weeks. Um, and that's why you'll notice as we get to goal number three, we're not trying to completely finish a whole bunch of things. We're going to move several things measurably forward because that's what's creating flow. All right. Um, Yvonne says, I already messed up goal number one. I bought some delightful backing fabric for this project. No, you did it because it's backing and you're going to finish the quilt. And then that project is going to flow out of your sewing space. And that's the whole point, right? So actually you provided a really wonderful illustration, Yvonne. I love it. If things are coming in, things all have to be, also have to be going out, right? Also remember that, and I don't know how to respond. <laughs> my watch is talking back to me also remember right that ponds or rivers that only flow out and have no inflow they dry up right and as we move towards goal number two on this slide uh, there may be a time where you know maybe the water level is too high we need to let some out without more inflow but ultimately arriving at a place where we can have a trickle in and a flow out is a healthy balance to keep all the joy units alive. The joy units of shopping, the joy units of new fabric, the joy units of sewing, the joy units of playing with our stash, right? And of ex like enjoying what's sitting in our sewing room, all right? So that brings me to goal number two, right? A another really wonderful goal of stash busting is to reduce expense or reduce waste, right? So stash busting is a creative challenge to make sure you're enjoying the fabric and other supplies that you've been so excitedly collecting. In the process, you can reduce both your spending and your contribution to global fabric waste, right? <laughs> Christine, I agree completely. Um, this is a goal that levels of it can be really good long-term sustainable goals, right? Being mindful of our purchasing habits because we want to be mindful of how much of our stash may ultimately end up in a landfill someday, right? How much uh, fabric are we buying that is contributing to things like water usage, et cetera, on the planet that we may never turn into quilts, right? Um, some of it may also just be, you know, I should maybe put some dollars into making sure these quilts are getting finished before I continue putting dollars into fabric, right? So we can bring down some of that sense of waste and um, over inflow in goal number two. Okay. Uh, let's see. Margo says most of my stash consists of fat quarters and some backing yardage. However, I also have a few kits. Scrap I now have from piecing a few quilts are freaking me out. Oh, I'm excited to get to that, Margo. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so you're working on goal number one. I love it. Moving stuff out, moving stuff out. Goal number three. And this, sir, all of these serve one another, right? When uh, this is measurable project. Blah, oh, I have a typo. Measurable progress on specific projects. When projects or supplies grow stagnant, it can feel like the air has gone out of our sewing room and our sense of creativity. Using stash busting as a time to make specific measurable progress on one to three projects is an amazing way to restart that sense of flow, right? Because I don't know about you, but if I get going on one project and I'm really loving it, almost immediately several other things start to stack up behind it, right? And on the one hand, this is really exciting. For example, at home, under my needle with ruler quilting, I've got the Mushies quilt, right? On the long arm, I have Chill Howie. Um, I have to quilt uh, either after Chill Howie or to quilt on the domestic, I have a Star Island. Um, I'm going to try big stitch binding on those mushrooms. I'm piecing a Polaris. I still have 100 days, 100 blocks, right? Almost as soon as I start making measurable progress on one project, I get this flood of creativity, right? But we're going to build this set list together to provide some focus to that creativity because if you're like me uh, and you can list off 17 projects like I just did, it's very easy for that to then all of a sudden you're like, I'm creative, I'm creative, I'm creative, I love this, I love this, I love this, <gasps> I'm overwhelmed. And then you just stop and you're not making progress on anything, right? So we want to keep that sense of flow by having a sense of focus. 
I recommend stash busting as a regular repeated practice. Over time, some of the shop your stash techniques will become second nature and you'll find that it is easier to maintain a sense of flow in your sewing space, right? And I talk about this a little bit further on. I want to note it here. Um, I pick summer as asterisk summer in the northern hemisphere because that's where I live reality right so if you live in the southern hemisphere this may be a good practice for you to do on the other half of the year right come back to this content when it's summer for you but I call it summer stash busting because for me I tend to actually do less sewing in the summer uh, but I tend to be really high energy I love the sun I love the warm and it's a really good time to create a little bit of focus and get some things done and moving forward uh, before getting into the cooler months where I tend to just have more, more sewing time, right? Um, so then I can kind of start with a fresh cue when I enter that cooler season, right? So as I cut batting for seven quilts last Sunday, that's amazing. That's amazing. And that's the kind of step when we're working on projects that we tend to underappreciate for ourselves, right? So more on that in a second. Oh, see, I'm already getting ahead of myself. So when to stash bust? In addition to the basics, I find, nope, I didn't update that text. Ignore that. When to stash bust? <laughs> after a big project. Stash busting is a perfect palette cleanser after a big project for some quick wins to get re-inspired for your next project, right? Did you just finish a really big bed size quilt? Make two pillowcases to go with it. Make a throw pillow to go with it. Um, make a tote bag out of that fat quarter that caught your attention when you were at the quilt shop last week, right? Um, these little things are stash busting too. Okay, that's another important thing. Um, oh, Christine, don't worry. We'll talk about reasonable goals in a minute. Um, that's another really important thing to remember is stash busting doesn't have to be a whole season, right? We're in a season of stash busting as a community right now, but simply taking some time, like if you finish up something big, when chill, how we comes off the long run, for example, um, I have three small quilts that are going to go on back to back that have been sitting, waiting to get quilted. And they've been kind of getting bumped down the queue in my long arming. And so this week I was like, when I finish chill, how we, I'm going to knock out these little projects and get them done, right? And that's going to give me that. I'm going to take that sense of accomplishment from Chilhawi and I'm going to immediately roll it into several other things and get a bunch of stuff done, right? If you finish a big project um, and then you've got scraps to deal with or you're just, you know, wanting to feel a sense of like more stuff going out of the sewing room, that's where something like making some throw pillows from those scraps to coordinate with the quilt is a good idea. It's where maybe doing a little de stash of like, what are these scraps am I not gonna use might be a good idea. Or where like, let me make a couple of pillowcases, bust a couple of yards in one fell swoop, check, feels awesome. Then I can move on to, you know, the next thing I wanna work on, right? Um, stash busting is also really good to do in your slow season. If you have a time of year that you typically do less sewing, for most of us it's summer, uh, that's a really good time to take, especially an inventory of your works in progress and be like, what can I push across the finish line, right? What is what has kind of gotten stuck in these middle stages and how do I, how do I shove it forward and get it done? Um, stash busting is also really great to do when you feel blocked, right? Um, the organization side of stash busting that we're going to talk about in just a second is a really good way to restore your sense of play, right? Sometimes just getting into your sewing room and refolding a bunch of stuff and stacking it back up in your stash uh, and seeing pretty fabrics that maybe you haven't seen in a little while is enough to make you go, oh, here's something I would like to make with these, right? Let's see, Mitzi says, last year I set specific goal. One, once one was accomplished, I created a new goal and it really moved me forward. Mitzi, I love that. That is flow right there. That is so that rolling list, fabulous. So here's the elements of stash busting that we're gonna go through together, okay? Stash busting can feel like a really big and daunting task especially if your brain has it filed under something um, like must use up all the fabric, okay? Uh, but during our time together, I'm gonna use some graphics like this to really break things down into manageable steps, okay? So starting at the top, all right, set a time. We literally just did this together, okay? The next eight weeks, we've already started, we spent a few weeks. So now until August 3rd, the quilting rock stars are in summer stash busting. We've set our defined season, all right? We're going to take inventory. We're going to go through the sewing room. We're going to see what do we have? Um, 
what do we have in terms of whips? What do we have in terms of fabric? What do we have in terms of scraps? And the other pieces that I hinted a little bit about in last week's blogs, um, what about our pattern collections? What about our thread? What about notions that aren't getting used, right? There's other elements of our stash than just fabric that can tend to start to pile up. Once we've taken inventory, we're going to de-stash. Stuff that doesn't bring us joy needs to go find a new home, okay? Um, and this has been a huge way that I've stash busted over the last couple of years, right? Is literally just giving fabric away, selling fabric, getting it out of the sewing room. Um, how big or small a component of your stash busting journey this de-stash step is, is totally up to you, right? Um, Margo, I'm going to, I'm going to call you out and this doesn't necessarily have to be true. I'm just going to use you as an example, right? You mentioned that the scraps from a few quilts are freaking you out. So what I didn't ask, but I was tempted to ask was, are you much of a scrap quilter? I'm not much of a scrap quilter. I love a good scrappy quilt, but it is rare that I'm going to truly cut a quilt out of scraps though. My Polaris quilt that's over here, I did mostly cut from scraps and like, I, the good Lord Jesus could have come back and I wouldn't have been surprised because that's not something I normally do. Anyway, um, if you have a bunch of scraps piling up and you're not much of a scrap quilter, it's time to find a friend who is and share those. And that might be something that gets de-stashed, right? More on that in a minute. Once we've gotten, well, not gotten rid of, once we have rehomed the things that no longer need to be in our sewing room, we need to get organized. What's left needs to have a home, all right? Then we're going to choose our fabric and choose our projects and choose our focus for the rest of this season. And then finally, back in August, we're going to come back together and we're going to celebrate the progress that we've made. And ideally, that means that you're going to meet the three goals we're going to set together today, right? But it's also possible that you'll only meet one and that's still progress and we still celebrate that, right? Every bit of progress is worth celebrating, okay? Let, let's head into some organization. Before I do that, any questions you have so far about kind of the what is stash busting and why are we doing it? Why does it matter? Umbrella that we just talked under. First part of the fire hose. Y'all made it. Congratulations. <laughs> Can y'all tell that I've been uh, just really spending a lot of time thinking about this of like, why this and why does it matter? <laughs> I'm going to awkwardly sit here in the quiet for another second because I want to give you all a chance to type if you have questions. Um, I'm also going to peek and make sure there's not anybody who's looking for the link and can't find it. And I think so far we're okay. How many of y'all saw my uh, like one o'clock in the morning email last night with this link? <laughs> I was curling in bed. We've been up late with friends and I was like, I need to email a link and make sure everybody has it. All right, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep on going. So next in our little circle of steps, right? We've set our time, we need to get organized. We're gonna start by taking inventory. One of my most common indicators of needing to stash bust is a general sense of chaos, right? Um, when I had a personal sewing room, then, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that y'all saw that late email. When I had a personal sewing room, it was, I would walk in and it just, stuff was kind of everywhere, right? Um, here at the shop, it is when I go into the back room and I can't find anything and stuff that I know is back there, I can't find and I'm getting frustrated looking for it. it means that stuff's going on. I'm like, it's time to reorganize. It's time to take inventory. We're going to need to do some stash busting, right? Um, examples of this kind of chaos that you may uh, have experienced is fabric piles that are unkempt or toppling. You can see a little bit of that in this photo. Um, a bunch of unquilted tops floating around, endless trays of kind of half pieced, half put together projects, right? The very first thing to do at this stage is to make an even bigger mess to see what all you have, right? Uh, when I was uh, like, honestly, like my kid's age, like first, second, third grade, once or twice a year, my mom would come into my room and find, I had to like pulled out every drawer and dumped everything out. And I was resorting and reorganizing, but it would be this just like horrifying, chaotic mess for like a full day. And then it would all get put away and I'd have a bunch of trash. I'd have a bunch of stuff for Goodwill, whatever. Um, I love this kind of thing, right? The back room here at the shop is about due for a reorganization. And it's not gonna get to happen until I get back from England. 
But the thought of like being up here one night for like six hours, like staying up late, pulling everything out of that room and sorting it, good audiobook, love it. Now, the big warning, not all of us get as excited about organizing and making a big mess in order to put it back together. So if you tend to be someone who is a little bit more easily overwhelmed by that, or you pull it all out and then your inner mean grump gets really loud. Look at all this fabric you bought that you haven't even used. Look at that project that you started 20 years ago. You haven't even finished that. Are you sure you're a real quilter? First of all, please ask that voice to speak nicer to my friend or I'm going to have to come have a fight with it. Second of all, if that just tends to be how your brain works, right? I want you to go section by section. Please do not try to do this with your whole sewing room at one time. You're going to end up crying in the middle of the floor. And I don't want that. That's not joy units, right? And that's not productive because this does not need to be a shame-based activity, right? So if you have a large stash, a chaotic stash, you tend to get overwhelmed by things like that. It might be today I'm going to refold the fabric on that shelf. And the steps that we're about to take as far as sorting things, you will do one shelf, one drawer, one section at a time. Another important note, you don't have to do your whole sewing room this summer. You might decide, love the stuff Holly Ann's talking about. I have four huge bookshelves of fabric. My goal this summer is to reorganize one of them. And I'll do the rest later right? Helen makes a great suggestion. Yep. Have a friend come help. The only asterisk I would put here is make sure you don't just accidentally swap your de-stashing. Okay. All right. Uh, Jan says, if you've been peeking into my sewing room, you just described me. Oh, Jan. It's okay. One step at a time, right? So first step, take inventory. As you're taking inventory, we're going to sort according to this little wheel. I love this little, this little wheel, uh, illustration, right? Um, the stuff that you're going to keep, especially on the fabric notions, thread supply side, right? You're going to put it back away. You're going to put it away tidily. You're going to have a better sense of what's there. Cause you'll have recently seen and touched it, right? So often we are out of sight, out of mind kind of people, right? We have to pull it all out and get a sense of what we have. Um, if you've been sorting your fabric by, uh, let's say fabric line or cut of fabric for years, maybe consider switching it to rainbow order, right? If you've been uh, sorting your fabric in rainbow order for years, uh, maybe con consider making some bundles of things you might look nice to think might look nice together in a future quilt and kind of set those aside as like, Ooh, I feel kind of inspired by this. Maybe I'm going to circle back and make something out of that later, right? But the stuff that's going to get that's going to get kept, we're going to put back away. We're just going to do it more tidily, okay? Then I want you to have a pile of stuff that you want to de-stash. This might be um, things that literally need to get thrown away, right? Or need to get recycled. So Mitzi mentions a really good one that she's been working her way through old quilt magazines, right? Um, if there's a pattern that you like, tear out those pages, put them in a page protector and a binder, right? Recycle the rest of that magazine. Right. If if there's, you know, a little bit of something that you enjoy or that you want to keep, by all means, let's recycle the rest. We don't necessarily need shelves and shelves of things like quilt magazines. Right. Um, so magazines are a great one. If there are patterns that you've never made and you know you're not going to make them, they might need to go to the guild free table. Right. Somebody else can get some joy units out of those. Um, if there's any fabric that's damaged. So it's gotten dry rot in it. It's gotten mildewy, especially if you've inherited stuff from other people. Um, heaven forbid, but I know this happened, the cat peed on it, right? And that, that smell's just never coming out. Some of those things may need to literally get thrown away, right? And then some of it might be, I have this quilt top, but I'm never going to quilt it. I'm out of love with it. I'm going to find a charity that accepts quilt tops, right? Or I'm going to see if a friend wants to use it for free motion quilting practice and then donate it right? Um, or if you've got a kit, maybe it's going to go to the guild free table, etc. Okay. Then we're going to sort our projects and notice that this is an enormous part of this wheel. Cause I think it's important to separate our works in progress by stage. Okay. So things that are getting pieced, hang on, let me grab my tray. I knew I was going to regret putting this as far away, right? Um, things that need to be pieced. We're going to separate those out. So here's one of my piecing projects right now. Things that need to be quilted, so quilt tops, right? Those need to be sort or be sorted out. And then in the third section, things that just need binding, 
Okay, because that's going to play into our quilting rock show set list. So sort those works in progress. Um, if you have something that you have gathered all the fabric, it's a kit, or maybe you've gathered all the fabric in the pattern, but you haven't actually cut it out yet, that's not a work in progress yet. Okay, that's a future project. Maybe consider having a shelf or a section of your sash that's designated to stuff I might want to work on in the future. Okay, but it doesn't need to be with your whips right now. Uh, Jenadita says, Summer Stash Blessing has inspired me to actually quilt the very first top I ever pieced over six years ago. It's queen size and it will feel so good to get it out of my sewing space and onto my bed. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Visualize that joy. That's going to keep you going. I love it. All right. So, what are we going to do with the stuff to keep? This is going to primarily apply to fabric, but as I mentioned, not exclusively fabric. Um, fabric that's staying in your stash should be sorted, folded, and stored neatly, ideally where you can see it, right? Shelves, clear bends, okay? Only keep things that bring you joy. This is really, really, really important, okay? And be wise about scraps in particular. If you're not generally a scrap quilter, please don't keep the one inch squares. You're not going to do anything with them. You're not, Okay. You know how I know? Because I'm not generally a scrap quilter. And if I keep the one inch squares, I don't do anything with them. They just sit in a bin until I de-stash them. Okay. Um, I know that there are quilters who are passionate about keeping scraps all the way down to half inch squares, because in theory, you could still piece with that. If you are concerned about the fabric waste and you're not sure where to de-stash scraps to, there are so many fabric and textile recycling services now, right? Find that option. All right. I, I got an ad for one the other day. They send you a bag that holds like 15 or 20 pounds of fabric and it's like 20 bucks to recycle it. Okay. So there are other options. Release the things that you know you're not going to use. All right. Now in the de-stashing, this is very important. De-stashing is re-homing uh, re fabric or projects to another person or to charity. Please make sure the recipient wants your de-stashed items before gifting. Okay. So there needs to be a to toss pile. Anything that, like I mentioned, has gathered dry rot, rot or mildew um, or is otherwise damaged or too small to be usable, you need to release it. Okay. If someone somewhere along the way primed your inner mean grump to be horrible to you about this, please plug your ears, find a fabric recycling service and toss the things that way. Okay. Let's see. Carrie says clear bins. My sewing room is not big enough. Maybe I need to get rid of sewing machines and books. You could consider rehoming sewing machines. You could certainly consider rehoming books. Um, if you have the option of something, even like bookshelves, Carrie, just being able to keep anything, keep things where you can see it as much as possible is going to be really, really key. Um, Claudia says, I keep only 2.55 inch and 10 inch squares or strips. Everything smaller is waste. Everything bigger is stashed. I'm pretty similar on that, Claudia. Um, and now I'm trying to get really good about if it's, if I think I'm going to use it, I need to use it right away and not let it gather up. Yeah. Someone says, I need to do something with all the bonus HSTs I've accumulated over the past few years. Ooh, someone hold that thought. That sounds like a really good candidate for your set list. All right, de-stashing fabric and supplies. Fabric can often be rehomed via the guild's free table to a friend or online. Some de-stashing items you may even be able to sell. Who was it that I saw was doing a de-stash this week? Hmm, it was on Instagram. South Bay Bella, maybe? Um, so, you know, keep in mind the ways that if you, especially if you say have a large collection of Alice in Glass or Tula Pink or other really well-recognized designers, if for some reason you're rehoming that, sometimes you can actually sell that um, and regain some of that investment, but also just doing a really good job of finding people and charities that would be really excited uh, to get your fabric. I've had a lot of rock stars sharing with me recently about how they've been connecting with like brand new quilters, like through their guilds or through their shops um, and being able to rehome some stash to them uh, so that they have fabric to learn on without having to make all that investment up front. So um, always keep that in mind as well. Then de-stashing projects. If you've fallen out of love with a, a kit or a quilt top or other whip, investigate friends or charities that may be interested in finishing them for you. Um, quilts for Cure used to do this back when I was uh, working on making quilts for kids with cancer, uh, that we would long arm quilts and get them finished and get them donated. So that's definitely an option as well. Your um, guild probably has good connections about that or your local quilt shop would be happy to help you find those options. Okay. 
The goal of de-stashing, this is going back to that idea of flow, right? Is to remove stagnant supplies and projects from your sewing room and leave behind only the things that bring you joy, right? So immediately we're, we're skimming the sludge off the top of the pond, right? And what is sludge in our pond might be super useful bacteria in somebody else's, right? I'm mixing my metaphors all over the place. Bear with me, right? Because what we're de-stashing may not necessarily be bad stuff or yucky stuff or ugly stuff. It might be really great stuff. It's just not bringing you personally joy anymore. And instead it's weighing you down and it's feeding your inner mean grump to say mean and unkind things to you. All right. And we want to get rid of that extra stagnant weight so that there can be a sense of fresh air again. Right. We got to dredge the stuff out of the bottom of the pond. Um, Mitzi says my quote club has a summer picnic each year and people bring things that they're no longer loving for an auction or a giveaway. I love that Mitzi. I love that. We've been floating around the idea, um, cause we're hoping spoiler for those of you who uh, have been asking about this, we're hoping to have our first kind of attempt at a retreat in July. And so we've been talking about maybe doing a white elephant one night where you bring stuff from your stash and that's your white elephant gift. And then we can you know, do the little white elephant game. So I think that's great. Get together with your quilting friends um, and do a little white elephant. And then maybe I'll commit to making charity projects out of that fabric, right? So next up, we need to organize our whips, right? So let's, let's assume for the sake of this illustration that um, you have spent a day or two or however long it takes, you have... You've got all your whips in a pile. You have de a bunch of stuff. Everything else is put away and it's looking nice and tidy and wonderful, okay? If you're focusing on a specific section of your sewing room, right? Um, think about what it would look like for that section of your sewing room to be nice and tidy and organized, okay? But next we need to organize those works in progress. So works in progress are often the bigger challenge to keep organized, at least for me, um, even than my fabric stash. So periodically taking time to gather and sort them can be really helpful. Mine tend to get scattered all over the place and they tend to get tucked into like Ikea bags and into bins. And then I don't realize how many kind of half done things I have floating around. So periodically getting them all out, getting them into light where I can see them is super important. As I mentioned, we're going to sort these things into three categories. Um, to piece, I love to use trays or zippy project bags to organize the things that I'm piecing. And I want everything I need for that project to be on the tray. Okay, that's fabric that has been cut. Um, in this case, with this these Polaris blocks, because I cut them from scraps, I know we are all shooketh. Um, as I cut them out, I actually made little kits right? So each little section is the pieces for a block. And I've got those organized on this tray. The pattern is on this tray. All the background pieces are on this tray. Um, and if this were something I had cut out from yardage and I had some big chunks of fabric left, I would actually leave those big chunks of fabric with all of these pieces until the quilt top is done. And that's because anytime I neglect to do that, inevitably I have like missed a two and a half inch square. And then I have to go find that fabric again to cut out the piece that I missed. You know, I miscounted when I was cutting, come up short, keep everything together until the quilt top is done. Okay. And keeping them together like this, I can like stack these up on a table or a bookshelf and kind of see at a glance what's going on. All right. Then we want to have in a separate section our projects that need to be basted and or quilted, depending on kind of where they're at in the stage, right? Best tip I know for this is to get like a cheap clothes rack at Target, Walmart, et cetera, and some hangers and keep all of these things on hangers. If you've got the backing, hang the backing on there. If you've drawn a quilting plan, put that on there. If you've already cut batting, put that on there. As much as it can all be together, do that, right? And then our third section, of course, is going to be our binding. These are the quilts that you can get across the line, finish line fastest, right? So if you are here with me and you're listening to all of this and you're going, how on earth am I ever going to jumpstart this thing? It just feels like it has been sitting stagnant for so long. If you have even a pot holder somewhere in your sewing room that just needs binding, that is one of the fastest ways to get something over the finish line and be like, oh my gosh, I finished a thing. What else can I finish? 
right? And just get like high on your own supply of finishing stuff for a second, okay? Uh, someone says, I've started making kits too. Lots of projects going, but it definitely helps me stay organized. Yes, I love that. All right. So questions about the organization step. This, I would argue, is the hardest step because it's a lot of steps in one, right? Like this is a big undertaking in and of itself. Um, and I think the biggest advice that I can offer is to practice self-awareness about your capacity. Um, no matter how big and daunting your stash feels, if you know that trying to organize the whole thing at once is going to send you into a spiral, um, really narrow, narrow your focus, put those binders on, on doing this one bookshelf, right? Because again, if we take that pond analogy, we've got a pond that a dam has been built. The creek on the other side has dried up, right? We can just start poking tiny little holes in that dam to start to release that flow again right? We don't have to blow the whole dam all at once. Okay. Just little tiny pieces, little bits of progress. Okay. The next section that we're going to head into, if you have questions, put them in the chat. I'm going to keep going. We're actually doing really well on time. This is really exciting. So we may wrap a little early. I'd rather wrap a little early than run out of time. So I'm, I'm loving this. This is a little bit of a side road. Okay. So just know that this is information here, um, that you, if you have a lot of what works in progress already, this information may become more relevant later, but because if we're going to organize our stash and fall back in love with our stash, then we're going to want to use our stash. I want to make sure y'all get these tips and tricks even if they're not immediately relevant to what you're going to work on this summer. Okay. Carolyn says, do you have a blog on how to machine bind? I do. Let me see if I can quickly find the link for you. It is also going to be coming up in our uh, summer stash busting lineup in a couple of weeks. So this blog will also get a facelift in a couple of weeks. Um, it's a little bit dated at the moment. Bless its heart. Yeah, this is, so it's a little dated at the moment. It's going to get a face, it's going to get a, a, a facelift in a few weeks, but it'll get the job done in the meanwhile. Um, Jan says Swiss cheese, the Swiss cheese it method, if it's too overwhelming, is that another way of saying like, just take it piece by piece? Yeah, just little, little gaps here and there, right? All right, so future selves, when we have our stash organized and we've created some flow and we've got projects moving through again, and it's time to... Uh, shop our stash. How are we going to do that? Yes, Carrie, there will be a replay available the moment that I'm done. Yep. Um, I will probably also email this slide deck out to all of y'all who registered for the Quilting Rockstar set list because it is a lot of information. So don't worry, you'll get it. <laughs> all right, let's shop our stash for a second. Depending on how big your stash is or how long it has been since you reorganized slash de-stash slash caught up on your works in progress, you may not be overly concerned with actually shopping your stash right now. If that's you, just tuck these tips in your back pocket for later. Um, but if you're somebody who is feels like they've already spent some time reorganizing and getting on top of things, if you're about ready to cut out a new quilt, but you actually want to know how to use the fabric that you already have, this is going to be for you, right? It is very, very, very common in our little quilt shop to have folks come in and say something along the lines of, I want to make this quilt. I promised myself I would shop my stash for this one, but that's just too overwhelming. So I'm here and I'm going to buy new fabric instead, right? I want to help you know how to shop your stash because I love it when you come in here and I get to help you pick out fabric, right? But I also love helping you pick out fabric from your stash. I think it's really, really fun. Okay. Um, and then sometimes we're going to put those two things together. Here we go. So the first method, the whole enchilada. All right. These are not overly creative names. It was just what came to mind at the time. Um, as this name suggests, this is a project that we're going to shop entirely from our stash for. All right. If you are unfamiliar uh, with this method, let me grab a link for you. Or if you're you know, unfamiliar with shopping your stash in general, this is a very fast overview. 
I wrote a very detailed blog about this last week. I'm dropping a link in the chat. Um, also, if you just go to my blog page at String and Story, it's one of the most recent blogs. So you'll see it. Okay. Uh, Jan says, even the smallest thing equals bigger things and you'll be done in no time. Yes. Slow and steady wins the race. Yes. Hold that thought in your mind. That's so important. All right, so this whole enchilada method works really well um, if you have a large stash or if you have big stacks of several different colors, okay? Um, as always, we want to pick a purpose and a pattern. And here's what I mean by that. What's the job of this quilt? What pattern do I want to make? Do you need to make a gift for a new niece or nephew? Uh, do you want to make a new quilt for your couch? Uh, do you want to just make a pattern from your stash that you haven't made before, right? Remember sewing quilt patterns? that you own but have not stitched before is another form of stash busting, okay? Because we can have pattern stashes too, all right? So pick a pattern and a purpose, then build a color palette. Y'all know I love to grab my little fabric chips that I've made from our color card, um, but building a color palette is going to be the thing that makes it less overwhelming to go shop your stash. Because then when you walk in ah, to your beautiful room full of bookshelves of fabric, right? And you have that color palette in front of you. Whether or not you pull out a fabric is answered by one thing. Does this fabric match one of these colors on my color palette? If yes, I'm going to pull it out as a potential fabric to audition. If no, it stays on the shelf, right? And so this helps eliminate some of that, like, but I have so many fabrics. Where do I even start? Okay. Um, if you're struggling to build a color palette, consider two options. One, uh, what colors do you have a lot of in your stash, either because they're your favorite or because you don't use them very often? Start there. Or if you know that there is one piece of like absolutely fantastic fabric that you've been dying to work with, what colors are in that fabric? Okay. Pull all the fabrics you're going to audition, right? So in this case, you can see here, I picked, some of y'all are going to recognize this quilt from years ago. And I created a mock fabric pull for it because the quilt top is already pieced. But this is the method that I used when I built this quilt years ago, okay? So navies, turquoises, whites, orange, yellow, all right? Pull all those out. And then color by color, do all these navies look good together? Oh, that one actually looks like royal blue. Let me pull that out and set it over here. Yes, now these all look like approximately the same navy. Do all these turquoises look really good together? Well, these are all really blue and this one's really green. So maybe not that one, right? And go through and do that, all right? Then from there, you'll pare it down based on how much yardage you actually need, all right? And narrow down to our final choices. Uh, Margo says, I'd hope to be a stash quilter, but I haven't even tried to start a scrappy quilt. What's the smallest size y'all suggest that I cut any scraps to keep by color? I no longer actually trim my scraps down. Confession moment. Um, and the reason for that is because then I'm relatively limited. Um, so what I would maybe suggest instead, Margo, if you've got kind of a pile of scraps, I would pick a pattern that is really scrap friendly, okay? Which I'm actually gonna show you on the next slide. To wrap this whole enchilada thing up, um, this pattern that I'm show that's shown here is Star Island. By string and story. Okay. So Margo, a pattern that I'd like you to consider is actually the one on this next slide. Uh, this is Polaris. Okay. And this is the mix and match method. So if you're interested in using up scraps, instead of maybe cutting scraps down, if this isn't something you have a history of doing, right? Instead of cutting scraps down to use in the future, I would consider making a scrappy quilt now with a pattern that lends itself to, instead of trimming these into squares to do something else with later, let me just cut out pattern pieces right now, okay? And having just cut out this Polaris quilt, it's really fabulously scrap friendly. It was really, really fun to work with this, okay? Um, so this mix and match method is, if you have that feeling of you love a little bit of brand new fabric, but you're also really wanting to use some scraps or some fabric from your stash, this is a really good best of both worlds kind of moment, okay? So we're gonna start out the exact same way that we're gonna pick a purpose and a pattern, okay? And we're gonna build a color palette. And so Margo, Again, keeping you in the hot seat here. Let's say the scraps you have already kind of have a bit of a color palette to them. That's going to that's gonna be your color palette that you're working with, right? So ma color match those. And be like, All right, here's my parameters as far as color is concerned. Then pick one or two sections of the quilt that you're going to purchase new fabric for, use yardage for. So in the case of this Polaris quilt, um, all of these 
cross kind of stars are from the Monarch Grove line, the Camp Gingham line, and there's a little bit of arcade woven in there. Okay, so several different fabric lines from Fabulism, and it's the the pieces that are left over from other quilts that we've made as samples. Okay, but as you can see, there's a lot going on with those fabrics, and I was like, we're gonna need to like simmer this quilt down a bit, or it's gonna look a little bit scrap vomity, which is everyone's worst fear, right? And so I was like, I have some uh, white sprout woven yardage that I can use for those cornerstones. And then I cut that green everyday chambray that I'm using as my um, background. I cut that off the bolt. Okay. So that was my new fabric and it allows this quilt to have a little bit of breathing room. Now, if you're doing this method and you're going to go to the quilt shop to pick out some new fabric to mix in with your scraps or the stuff from your stash, bring the stuff from your stash with you. This is super important. Bring it with you so you can play the matching game. That way you don't guess. It ends up not exactly matching. And then you have to go back and buy more fabric, right? Because then we're kind of perpetuating the cycle of too much stuff. Okay. Um, so play the matchy matchy game and then you'll be ready to go off to the races. Margo says, I meant what size if I plan on doing color palettes instead of keeping tiny pieces. So as Jan mentioned, if you are really wanting to cut things down, um, and then at what point is the cut off, um, I will be freshening up this blog this week, actually. So your timing is perfect. Um, organize. Did I already update this one? Let's see. Organize scraps. Let me look make sure this is the right one. Yes. I have a summary as well as links to Bonnie's longer blogs right here, Margo, of the scrap user system. Yeah. Great question. All right. Um, a note about fat quarters as we're talking about shopping our stash. If you have big stacks of fat quarters in your stash, look for patterns that are made specifically for using this type of pre-cut. There are a lot of patterns available that actually have directions written for cutting the main parts of the quilt out of fat quarters. Depending on the quilt, you may also need some background fabric. So um, lo and behold's rhythm is a really great example of that, that you use fat quarters for all the like multicolored stripies, but then you have a solid background, right? There are also patterns like dogwood blossoms, which is shown here, that uses just fat quarters and there's not additional background fabric. Um, and so this uses a nice stack of fat quarters and then they're done. There's almost nothing left over at the end. It's really, really great. Yeah. Uh, Michelle says, I don't cut down my scraps. I just sort by color. It gives me more flexibility. Anything smaller than a fat eighth and larger than two inches, I keep. Ooh, that's a good, I like that parameter, Michelle. Larger than two inches and smaller than a fat eighth qualifies as a scrap worth keeping. <coughs> I like that a lot because these, um, I think these cornerstones finish at like two inches on here. So yeah, that's a really good usable size. Great tip, Michelle. Now, this final method of shopping our stash, I call it get it done. This is for the scrappy backs. Um, this is when you've got big pieces or weird pieces that you're really not sure how to use or you like how they look as a big chunk and you wanna just piece them together for backing. Um, in this instance, I was also furthering the theme of a quilt. So the other side of this quilt is one that I called Murmuration. Um, and it's all flying geese and it had a color wash and I like hand stitched birds across the top, right? The whole theme of the, of the quilt was birds and murmuration. So I used all bird related or bird, uh, kind of invoking fabric on the back of this. These are just big old chunks from my stash. So this is a really fun way. If you're like, I've got like big, long things I've trimmed off from the sides of quilts, or I cut borders and I'm left with, you know, like 12 inches by, you know, 60 inches and what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, you can get some of those big funky pieces out of your stash by doing some nice scrappy backs. All right. Yvonne says, I've chosen dogwood blossoms for my project. That makes me so happy, Yvonne. It's so good. All right. Questions about shopping our stash. And then I promise we're finally going to actually fill out our set list. We had to do a lot of setup. Right, we had to we had to reorganize our whole sewing room. Now, while y'all are typing questions, I do just want to mention, and I've hinted at this so far today, but I want to say the thing explicitly. Okay, I hope it is obvious that everything we're talking about today is very much a process. This is not necessarily something that you're going to jump off this call and be able to go tackle this today. 
right? There's a reason that we have put together a season of stash busting. Um, you might go through, you maybe you've already dug through your stash enough that you already know kind of what you want to put on this Quilting Rockstar set list, right? And you're going to focus on those while reorganizing in the background over the next eight weeks. That's a great system too, right? I've set this up for teaching it as we organize and then we focus and then we stitch. But this is an ever ongoing process. At the very beginning of our time together, right, I talked about stash busting as something that we circle back to over and over and over again. Um, because our quilting process tends to be cyclical or seasonal, we have seasons where, you know, seven of our favorite designers have new fabric come at, coming out. Please see this fall when literally everyone in Ruby Star Society is releasing new fabric. My stash is going to explode. It's going to be a whole thing, right? Uh, and then we have we have seasons of working through that fabric and making projects with it. And then we go all around and around again. Yep. Margo says, I like having a fabric to tie a quilt together rather than just scrappy. This is such a great idea. I love that too. Um, let me see if I can find this other blog that I wrote. String and story, any pattern scrappy. Um, the... I don't remember if this blog is actually on the lineup for this year. This is a blog I wrote years ago about making patterns scrappy and how to work with fabric requirements different than what the designer calls for. So like maybe the pattern's written for yardage, but you want to work with back quarters. Um, but Margo, I really talk a lot about this idea of having like one unifying fabric. And this is a concept that I learned from Bonnie Hunter, that when she does her mysteries each year, she gives you color palettes. And then she usually says, you know, you need four yards of a constant. And it's not necessarily the background, but it is a fabric that is going to appear in lots of places in the quilt and is going to give a unifying effect. Um, so having um, having kind of a method to that madness, I think, is really key. I love it. All right. So now that we have reorganized, let's build our Quilting Rockstar set list. Over the next eight weeks, as I continue to write and release blogs with tips and tricks for getting projects done, and as we all continue to reorganize ourselves in the background, uh, we're going to continue creating flow by actually getting three projects moved closer to the stage of completion, okay? So I said early on in our time together today that one of our big, big goals is to create flow through our sewing room, right? We've started this process already as we've talked about sorting and reorganizing, removing stagnant projects and supplies uh, that are no longer bringing us joy. So we can focus on the stuff that we're really excited about and that we really love. The next step is to create flow by actually making measurable, specific progress on projects and even getting some projects across the finish line. Now, one of you asked me way back at the beginning of our time together, and I said, we will get there. What is a measurable, specific goal, right? And I like to think of quilts as having three major milestone points. Now, you, of course, could make many more milestone points within the quilting process, right? But I generally think of there being three major milestone uh, points anytime we're making a quilt, okay? We have getting the quilt top pieced, we have getting it quilted, and then binding it, okay? And so that's how we're going to measure goals this summer together. Of course, you can totally set different milestones for yourself. You'll notice I have little checkpoints outlined on here. Um, but if you've never set goals like this before, I think you're going to find this set list really, really useful. Okay. So let me grab a pen. If people could quit texting me, that would be awesome. By people, I mean my sweet hubster. <laughs> None of y'all are texting me. Um, let me grab this link again. Um, and I'm going to drop it in the chat. Here we go. That if you don't have this set list, you can listen to this section and then drop your email into this link, stringandstory.com forward slash summer dash stash dash busting dash 2023. Um, and I will email this to you so that you can fill it out. All right. All right. I am going to, nope, I'm going to go over this and then I'm going to take my camera down. So we're returning to our whips that we sorted a little while ago together, right? Um, and as much as possible, as we choose three projects to work on, I want you to follow your joy. 
Now, I know that some of you, like me, may have certain things that have to meet a deadline, right? You've got a baby shower, you've got a wedding, you've got whatever, and there is a time pressure. Uh, but if you do not have any time pressure deadlines around your stash busting this summer, I really encourage you to follow your joy as much as possible, okay? Um, that's going to be one of the best ways to retrain our brains and retrain that inner mean grump that stash busting is not, a, is not a punishment, okay? It's about rediscovering our joy through a very specific creative exercise. Uh, the comparison that I've made a, in a lot of different places uh, throughout kind of teaching various parts of quilting is I love to think about an artist with their palette, right? You almost never meet a painter who uses like 75 colors. Most painters have like eight to 12, maybe 15 paints that they put on their palette and they mix everything else, right? And the specific palette that a painter prefers helps make their work distinctive, right? And that, that color palette can become really recognizable. So if you uh, watch PBS in the 90s and you spend any time watching Bob Ross, as you all should, because Bob Ross was everything, uh, phthalo blue was his thing, right? And this is this really like hot, turquoisey blue. It's very... Um, iconic. It's very recognizable. Like you've seen this color once and you're like, that's phthalo blue, right? And it, it just takes a tiny little bit to go a long way. It's a really potent color. Um, and it was a, a key part of Bob Ross's work and of recognizing his pieces and his color palette, et cetera, right? I could probably still list the like eight or nine colors that were on his palette, but that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is we're putting specific constraints and focus on ourselves in order to rediscover our creativity. We're building a fenced in backyard and then we're free to play within the fence. All right. So as much as we can put that fence around our joy, we're going to have a higher intensity of joy over the next eight weeks. And it's going to make us more successful at retraining our brain that this is a fun, exciting thing to do from time to time. Okay. So we're going to go section by section. And as we're doing this, I want you to take into consideration a few things. How excited are you to do this project? How far along is this project? Okay. How much quilting time do you have in the next eight weeks, right? I'm out of town for like four of the next eight weeks. So I'm going to have to be really choosy about what I think I'm capable of finishing. Okay. Um, and then I want you to think about how satisfying it will be to finish the project. Uh, one of y'all was sharing, hold on, I'm going to scroll up and see if I can find who was it that said this? Janadina said that they are quilting the very first quilt top that they ever pieced. And they're just so excited to think about what it's going to be like to get that quilt top out of their sewing room after six years and onto the bed. Right. I want you to think about projects like that too. How satisfying will it be to finish the project? All right. So I'm going to pull this down. Hi, I get to see you big. How exciting. And let's fill this out together. If you filled this out previously, feel free to just listen and follow along um, or feel free to do a second one and maybe make some addendums. Totally up to you. All right. So today's date, June 3rd, 2023. So um, if by my math, let me check. I'm looking at my calendar. One, we are exactly two months from when we're going to do our virtual quilt show together. Okay. So I have two months to finish these. So if my goal finish date is August 3rd, I'm going to put August 3rd on here. I think that's okay. If you're contributing to the virtual quilt show, I will have details later about exactly how to do that. All right. Now, project to piece. I have a couple of options on this, but the one that's really in front of my face right now that I really want to work on whoop, is Polaris. Um, this was a quilt that I cut out by accident. Did you know that you can cut out a 60 by 72 inch quilt by accident? Cause I did, uh, well, I didn't know that, but I managed to do it. And uh, it was just me following this wild tear of inspiration one day, uh, but now I'm in it and I don't want to leave it sitting cause it's sitting here in the shop. It's gathering dust. I really want to see what it's going to look like finished. So um, my project to piece is going to be my Polaris and it is um, a scrappy fabulism. Sorry, I've got um, a fruit fly that's flying around for some reason. Scrappy Fabulism Fabrics. 
And then down here, I've got my different kind of milestones, right? That I can mark off where I'm at, right? So I have chosen my fabric and I've done the cutting, okay? Now, if you are someone who really thrives on the rush of a new project and you're like, if I have to put three things that I've already started on this set list, I'm going to hate everything about my summer, then you may want to put something fresh and new here. If you're putting something fresh and new that you haven't, you know, chosen the fabric for or anything like that, I want you to consider making sure that it's a small enough project to finish. Okay. Maybe not 60 by 72, maybe not bed size. Cause that, what was the other conversation I had the other day? Marcy and I were talking about, oh, I want to do a project with Liberty of London fabric. Um, cause I'm going to Liberty of London in a few weeks. And I was like, do we, do we think that I have time to piece that before England and Marcy, who is like me, reckless at times with how much we think we can get done. She's like, yes. And I was like, here's the problem. I would want it to be a bed size quilt. And realistically, no, I do not have time to piece a bed size quilt in the next two weeks. Right. So I want you to think about the thing I did not put on here that maybe would be worthwhile is this is a 60 by 72 inch quilt. Right. So think about the time that you have available to you. If you have a project that you've already chosen the fabric, you've done the cutting, you've pieced the units, they just need to grow up into blocks and a quilt top. Even if you only have a little bit of sewing time over the next few weeks, um, chances are you can get that to the finish line, right? Because number one, this project to piece, the goal is simply to arrive at a quilt top. We're not trying to get this all the way to done. We're just moving it forward. Okay. Um, Yvonne says, yes, drop in the chat. What is your project to piece? If you've already been working on this, what is your project to piece? Where is it at? Etc. cetera. Um, Yvonne says, my project is a bedspread for our king size bed. Not sure I'll be able to finish the whole thing in eight weeks. So Yvonne, here's another thing you can consider, right? Because a lot of this is arbitrary stuff that I've made up, right? Because I think it's a good idea. Um, it might be that you put a little asterisk on there that says, I just want to have my blocks done at the end of eight weeks, or I want to have half of this quilt top done at the end of eight weeks, right? If you want to modify your finish line, right? Robin Arzone, one of my very favorite Peloton instructors, she always says at the beginning of her rides, particularly her really hard ride, she says, I'm going to call numbers. They are a guideline. If they're not right for you, you can make a modification. A modification is a boundary and a boundary is sexy. So if you need to modify what the finish line for any one of these things is, do that, right? My thing here is I want to facilitate these projects being more done in eight weeks than they are right now. Honestly, any movement is worth celebrating, right? Because sometimes we just have stuff that's been sitting. We just got to start that ball rolling, right? An object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. Let's get the motion happening. Jan says, I'm doing Bonnie Hunter's triple threat and it's taking forever, but using up so many scraps. It's my number one focus to finish. I always have a snowman rag quilt. Uh, also have a snowman rag quilt that has lots of pieces. That's awesome, Jan. Jeannie says, have fun in London. My daughter lives there. Be prepared for sticker shock at Liberty Fabrics. Oh yeah, I'm sure, Jeannie. I, I already told John, I was like, so I'm going to spend a lot of dollars. Prepare your spirit now. <laughs> Margo says, I think after today, I'll make some changes on my list. Ooh, Margo, that's exciting. Yes, we're going to England this summer. <laughs> Jan says, I'm trying to strive to sew possibly an hour a day in the summer. Oh, I love that. Hang a um, calendar up and put an X on the days that you meet that goal. That's really awesome. Once you get a couple of days in a row, then you just tell yourself, don't break the chain. Don't break the chain. I love it. Carrie says, monthly quote project and I'm two months in, two mo or two months behind. Yeah, get caught up on that piecing. I love that, Carrie. All right, so project to piece. We've sorted out, right? Take into consideration, like I said, how far along this project is, how excited you are about it, um, how much time you think you're going to have, right? This is going to be arguably one of the most time-consuming things on this set list. Uh, unless you're like quilting a chill Howie on your domestic, which would also be very time-consuming, okay? All right, next up, our project to quilt. I feel torn about this. So I thought about having an answer before I came on live today about what I want my project to quilt to be. And then I decided that maybe it's better to let y'all watch me wrestle this through. Okay. So some context, I have a lot of projects in here that need to be quilted. So I've got this dogwood blossoms that's behind me. Opposite me, I have a very small metamorphosis. 
I have two star bright quilts. Yes, from the quilt along and was that 2020? Yes, I have lots of intermean grump thoughts about how I haven't gotten those done yet. Um, what else is over there? I have a dog, a big dogwood blossoms over on the rack, and then I have my big bug on my glasses. Then I have my big aster quilt that I just finished. Okay. So I have, I'm gonna write out my options here. I have a uh, monarch grove dogwood. I have watermelon dogwood. I have a uh, Starbright one, Starbright two. <laughs> one has a cream background, one has a navy background. Um, I have Astra and I have Metamorphosis. Now, most of these I don't even have a backing made for. One I do have a backing picked out, but I'm going to have to piece it. That's my Astra. Here's my conundrum and why I'm struggling with this so much. I know that Dogwood Blossoms and Metamorphosis are going to get quilted. And I know that they're going to keep, to get quilted because I'm taking them to England to take photos. So I could put either one of those down at this place in my set list and have a level of guaranteed success, right? And I think that would be reasonable to do. because I'm very limited in my quilting time this summer. The project I want to put on this set list is Astra because I really want it done. However, I don't, I legitimately don't know if I'm gonna have time to get that done this summer. And so I'm concerned that I might be setting myself up for failure. So, against my Enneagram three tendencies. I'm going to take the easier option here. I am going to put two quilts because they're both small. So I'm going to put my Monarch Grove Dogwood and I'm going to put uh, the Metamorphosis because there's a really good chance I will actually load them on the long arm at the same time with the same backing, okay? Um, I do not have quilting plans, backings, basings, or anything for these, right? So all of my checks are going to go unchecked, all right? So I, I talk that through with y'all because if you, like me, have a quilt that you are really excited about, but you know that you do not have the time to do it right now, you can follow the more pragmatic choice there, right? I'm, I'm also very excited about quilting both of these. Not quite the same as Astra because Astra is going to go on my bed, right? And there's a lot of hours of piecing in Astra. It's going to be really highly satisfying, but I think I will get more joy units from the satisfaction of both quilting these quilts and getting to cross it off my list. Then if I put Astra on here and don't do it, I'm going to feel so disappointed in myself, right? And I don't think that quilt's going to get quilted until August. So I'm going to set myself free and I'm going to pick the more accessible option because I want the joy units of the satisfaction of finishing. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm seeing a few things in here that I want to read out loud. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. $30 a meter. I'm not even surprised because it's that Liberty lawn and it's fantastic. Um, let's see. Delina says, I'm trying to work a few hours a day on strip twist. I have two quilts. A cousin gave my, uh, gave me that I really want to finish by August for a family reunion. I love that Delina. Chrissy says, let me know what you decide to do with the Liberty Prince. I have so much and can't decide. I went to England in December, 2021. Um, I would love to do another Polaris. What was the other quilt I was thinking about? I was thinking about a serious quilt. What was the one I was thinking about one in bed this morning? What was it? I don't remember. I will keep you posted, Christy. I will keep you posted. Cheryl says, I'm going to go with finish my FMQ graduation project. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Um, we will also be having a graduation in August. So shortly after the um, virtual quilt show that we're talking about, there will be an FMQA graduation. So 
think about that. Another thing worth considering for either your project to quilt or your project to bind um, is what quilt do you potentially want to submit to the quilt show at the end of the summer? Okay, that's important to keep in mind too. All right, so, so far I'm going to finish piecing Polaris. I'm going to quilt my Monarch Grove Dogwood Blossoms and the Monarch Grove Metamorphosis. Now I have to pick a project to bind. Very uh, unusually, <laughs> I don't have any quilts lurking around waiting on binding at the moment. And that is because Darcy did me, not Darcy, Marcy did me an enormous favor. She bound all my stuff. <laughs> because she was tired of looking at my unbound quilts. So for my quilt to bind, I'm actually going to put um, my gingham mushroom quilt. It's a little mini quilt that I'm almost done quilting. Because I want to do big stitch binding on that quilt. So that is one that... Um, I want the satisfaction of trying a new technique with that one. So remember, I'm following the joy units. So I'm going to make sure that I am uh, looking for different sides of things to be working on, right? So I need to quilt first, and then I'm going to big stitch bind. So once again, whoop. once again, I don't get to actually check anything off on the bottom here yet, uh, but that's okay. We'll get there. Let's see. Nicole says, I love handwork. Binding is a joy for me. So peaceful and satisfying to know that it is the finish line. I need to work on my love of binding. <laughs> Lydia says, what about GSA projects? Could we put that into? Yes. Um, and Lydia, I would say that you could pick any three of these categories to put a GSA project in if you wanted to put that in. Um, so for those of you who don't know, GSA Garment Sewing Academy, it's re-enrolling next week in case you missed the last one and you want to join us. Um, but yes, I think you could put that in any one of these categories, whichever one just feels best to you, depending on maybe how far along the garment is. I love that. Um, Christy says, I don't have any quilts to bind either. Once the project is quilting, I love to do the binding. So Christy, for you and for others like you, I would recommend whatever project that you're going to quilt, that can also be the project that you're going to bind, right? So this might be two projects. Now, it is also worth noting, technically speaking, you could pick a single project and go all the way through and get one project done start to finish this summer. And if you're someone who's generally on top of your works in progress, that might be a really awesome option, right? Of like, I just wanna pick a summer project and I'm gonna start at the beginning, I'm gonna pull fabric from my stash and I'm gonna make this quilt. I love that idea. You can totally do that. If you like me have quite a few projects floating around in different stages of being half done, this might be three different projects that you're just going to move them forward, right? And that's how you're going to be creating that flow. All right. Any questions about our Quilting Rockstar set list? Your next step, this is the hardest part of this. I want you to put this somewhere where you can see it and I want you to stick to it. This is the challenge. And, and this is, you know, uh, Margo mentioned that she may make some changes, right? This doesn't have to be carved in stone, but really one of the things that makes stash busting effective is putting that fence around the backyard and staying in the backyard, right? We're whole adults. We are free and capable and relatively safe to unlatch the gate and go out of the backyard, okay? The challenge is that there's things to, that need to get done in the backyard, right? So my challenge to you is that once you get this filled out and you spend some time with it, right? Maybe you did a draft right now. Maybe leave it on the kitchen counter for a day or two and look at it every time you walk by and do that little gut check of how excited am I about this? How much joy am I finding? Or if you keep looking at it and go, man, I really wish I'd put that other project down as my project to quilt. I think I'm going to change it, right? Spend a couple of days really firming this up in your spirit. And then I want you to practice self-control and focus on these things over the next eight weeks. All right. So let me put my slides back up because that brings me full circle. All right. We started our time together today, an hour and a half ago. We talked about having a season of stash busting, talked, talked about the important steps of taking inventory, de-stashing getting organized and choosing our focus. That's what we just did. 
Now we're in another big season, right? And we are going to press through the next eight weeks. We're going to, we're going to meet these goals. And then on August 3rd, we're going to come back together and we're going to have a big party. We're going to have a virtual quilt show and we're going to celebrate. And y'all, I have some really exciting ideas for that. Okay. It's going to be really great. Okay. So as we're in this interim, you like me might already be thinking, how do I make sure I stay focused? How do I organize my time over the next week? Um, how do I, or over the next coming weeks, how do I uh, stay motivated to do this? Um, and I have, I have a suggestion for you. All right. If you've got questions, drop them in the chat. I'm going to get to them in a second. All right. So your next steps, you absolutely can take what you've learned today. Follow these steps. Enjoy the blogs that are going to be coming out every week. Um, if you signed up to receive this, you'll get that blog via email every single week. And that's a really great accountability tool. Right. And then you can just come join us. Um, if you did the general admission for summer stash busting, it'll be $5 to submit a quilt to the virtual quilt show. But if you really enjoy being online together and you're like, I want more of this, this is really great. Can I sign up for that? If you want to spend more time with your quilting besties, if you want a little bit more of a social element to your summer stash busting, I'd love for you to come backstage with me. I told you that all of the quilting rock star analogies were going to just, we're chock full of our band language here. Okay. I would love for you to come backstage with me with the quilting rock star backstage pass. So this is a new idea that I'm trying out. Well, not totally new. We did something a little similar back in 2019. Uh, I'm riffing on it a little bit, right? Um, but the Quilting Rockstar Backstage Pass is a short-term membership. It's a three-month membership that includes all the fun, free things of summer stash busting. The set list that we just filled out, those weekly blogs delivered via email, and this Quilting Rockstar Bandcamp, and of course, the ability to attend the quilt show. Uh, but if you'd like to add that little extra something, the Backstage Pass also includes three commemorative quilt labels. So if you happen to be finishing or moving towards finishing three different projects, when you're done with them, they can get a special quilt label marking them as having been part of this season of your stash busting journey. I um, actually ordered those yesterday. I'm really excited for them to arrive. Um, it also is going to include two live Zoom accountability calls, one on June 7th and one on July 12th. Those of you who are already backstage or if you were backstage prior to like Tuesday, um, I already sent out that first link. I will send it out again at the beginning of the week because that's right around the corner. Um, and what's really fun about these Zoom calls is they're literally Zoom calls. So we're going to be able to see each other and talk in real time. This next one on June 7th is really going to be about um, setting a more detailed schedule for ourselves of like, how do I take these three goals and break them down even further? Which one should I tackle first? Which one should I tackle next? How do I make sure I'm making progress? Um, and then on July 12th, we're going to do a check-in. Hey, this is a really great time to probably have like two out of these three goals done. How is that going? Uh, what roadblocks have you run into? How can we help you move forward? How can we, you know, have a little bit of a study hall together? And if you want to sit on those Zoom calls and actually just work on meeting your goals because you want to do it with friends, way to go. Um, plus, if you're backstage with me, you get to enter a quilt in our virtual quilt show for free at the end of the summer, which is really, really awesome. Um, and I wanted to keep this super accessible. So it's seven bucks a month, right? It's a coffee. It's a coffee because I just want to be able to offer you that little extra something, something, right? Um, Cheryl, the one on June 7th, I believe we set it for 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to be trying a new thing with these Zoom calls. Some of y'all may be familiar with this. It's called breakout rooms. And so it's where I can take like the group of us that's on the call and separate us out into like smaller groups for talking and answering questions and things. Um, and I'm a little unclear on how that's going to work with the replay. My hope is that it'll still work just fine with the replay, that there will be a replay. And if you can't tune in live, you can at least watch that. If it is mad chaos on June 7th, and for some reason that doesn't work, um, then I will reevaluate the plan and might end up adding in a third call if we need to do chaos mitigation. Because I want to make sure that this is, you know, as accessible as possible. Also, because I know some of y'all work, because we're doing the one on June 7th during the day, my goal will be for the one on July 12th to be in the evening so that hopefully we can at least get everybody on at least one live. Great question. All right. So if you're like, well, that sounds super fun. How do I sign myself up for that? Um, you better believe I have a link, right? So this backstage pass includes all of the free benefits of summer stash busting, plus those three commemorative quilt labels, the two live Zoom accountability calls, and getting to enter a quilt in the quilt show for free at stringandstory.com forward slash shop 
forward slash P forward slash SSB dash backstage dash pass. Like I said, just click, just click the thing, right? Um, oh no, Yvonne, we, we may end up having to do makeup calls as Yvonne mentioned, we're, we're beta-ing this and I'm really another 7 a.m. meeting. Um, don't you worry. We're, we're learning together. I'm going to be taking feedback from y'all about how this works. Um, but another really cool thing about this is to be perfectly honest, doing something like summer stash busting and committing to these blogs every week and doing something, um, like band camp takes an enormous amount of time and energy. And if you're able and you're loving this, even if you're not sure if you're going to be able to make those Zoom accountability calls, um, jumping into the backstage pass is an awesome way to communicate to me how valuable you're finding this content. And it makes it easier to do this again in the future. Okay. Um, Yvonne, you are. <laughs> I know that you are. So you're good. Um, yeah. Carry on. Yvonne, you're in. Huzzah. Welcome to backstage. Uh, so straightguystory.com forward this link, blah, 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 blah. Oh no, you've got something both days, Mitzi. That's so sad. Um, we may add in more. What can I say? Because I want y'all to be able to jump in with me. So if this sounds fun, this is a no brainer way to take your summer stash busting experience to the next level. Connect with your fellow rock stars and finish more quilts for $7 a month over three months. Huzzah. Margo, you did sign up for backstage. I don't have everyone's name in my head, but I have a couple of y'all's names in my head. It's very convenient. All right. So rock stars, thank you so much for joining me today for this hour and a half. I hope it has been valuable. I hope it has been informative. I hope you feel inspired and excited. And of course, I really hope I'm going to see you backstage so that we can spend more time together and actually get to dialogue on this um, more than just me being a fire hose. Now we do have a few minutes. So if you have questions, please drop them in the chat. I would love to answer. Uh, I'm really excited about making this summer productive and memorable. Um, and it feels really, really good to bring back a tradition that we kind of walked away from for a couple of years at String and Story. And um, many of y'all nudged me to bring it back. Marcy nudged me to bring it back. So Many thanks to all of y'all for just saying, hey, remember that thing you used to do? I think you should do it again. <laughs> all right. I'm going to stay on one more second and see if y'all have questions. Like I said, Margo, you're in. Yvonne, you're in. I think I see somebody else who just jumped in. Jennifer, welcome. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. A couple of y'all jumped in last night too. Uh, Nancy jumped in last night. Who else? I saw somebody else's name come through. Let's see. Let me find it. Susan. Oh, so exciting, y'all. All right. Y'all are fabulous. I deeply appreciate you. Um, Becky says, random question. What's the brown heart quilt pattern behind you? This is heirloom hearts. We actually have a kit. Um, that one's a little old. We have a lovely kit for it. So this is heirloom parts. It includes your background fabrics and your arcade woven plaids. <laughs> so yeah, love that random question. That's a good one. Isn't it fun? We haven't had a chance to hang this one up where everybody could see it. So we decided to rearrange. Uh, Jeannie says, always had great info. You've been inspiring me for the last couple of years. Oh, Jeannie, I love that. Christine says, thanks so much for this. My schedule is too overwhelming, so I won't be able to join, but I love your stuff. I love that, Christine. That's fantastic. And I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Janet says, I just found this webinar. I missed the first 30 minutes, but so excited to start this. Great news. The replay will be up immediately. Y'all are wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for getting up on a Saturday morning with me. If you're watching the replay, congratulations on getting to sleep in. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and as always, you can leave comments here. You can reach us at hello at stringandstory.com. And I'm really excited to spend the summer with y'all. Bye for now.